Hi, I'm Eleni and I thought I'd do a very quick video on HCL, what it is, what it isn't, and how it, wh how it helps you be and do things differently. Now what it is, it's a mindset and toolkit. Now why do we need another leadership model and mindset? Because the others don't necessarily question what we assume about what it means to be human. In the context of our industrialized mindset, and that's not only in the industrialized countries, because the way the industrialized countries lead in the globalization, it kind of like distributes this way of thinking globally. So this is really a global issue now, is the mindset in the industrial model that we have now, which is a legacy, but it's really the same thing we use, um, is about seeing people as objects and as tools to this mechanism called the industrial model versus, you know, humans, the humans we are, right? And so this is a mindset and toolkit that makes sure that we question what we assume about what it means to be human. And then that assumption influences everything we think, feel, and do, and really increases our ability to be effective because then we, we help each other get their, our needs met. We help each other feel good. And when we feel good, we're more productive, we're more happy, we're more focused, creative, and ingenious. It's also a way to solve problems. So in the interaction of, of people, which you know is most of the kind of interaction we have in our society is through people, even though a lot of us spend a lot of time with computers, but in interaction with others, those people problems re require a new way of thinking based on a new assumption. And so using HCL helps you really solve people related problems in ways that we haven't been at least in, a, in, a, in an organizational way. What it isn't, it's not about being perfect. It's not about getting it right all the time. It's not about never making mistakes. It's not about judging ourselves or the others. And it's not a simplistic model, even though it's very, very simple simple yet powerful. Now, these are a couple of things that it helps you do and be. It helps you use and find and develop inner sources of power. Now, on, for the last numerous uh, centuries, we've been using power, like power equals people in position power, people who have prestige, go to specific universities, or come from specific families, and people who have a lot of money. So even if you have no education and no prestige and you have a lot of money, you are respected, at least in the culture we have now and for the last numerous centuries. So power equated to external sources, like what you have. Now, what we're seeing is in an, in an environment or a context where things crumble, like billionaires become millionaires or you know people can lose money because of the fluctuation of the financial industry or the financial market or you know fires happen and that raise a whole a whole city things happen and the external world is less stable or predictable than it used to be at least in our perspective and so it behooves us and it benefits us to have inner sources of power what are what are sources of power that are inner self-confidence um, self-trust self-respect leading with values versus preferences. So as a sample of what, you know, HCL helps us be and do is, you know, is these. It's a lot more, but this is just a teaser. In the sense that it allows us to create engaging ways of collaborating and of solving problems so that we, we can work on and focus on what we need to do versus what won't help us. Now, why haven't we done this in the past? Why, with all these books we read and all the articles written and all the courses given and all the MBAs, why haven't we learned how to do this so far? Well, because we haven't questioned what we assume about what it means to be human. And this assumption is in our subconscious minds because of the way we're educated in the education system, which is an industrial model. It assumes that people should you know, do things or learn things so that they can get a job. It's not for the sake of optimizing our creativity or our confidence. It's not for the sake of learning. It's not for the sake of exploration. Even though there are initiatives in our education systems globally that look at those, but if you analyze them and you can see other videos that do analyze them, it's focused on reward and punishment and criticism, judgment, and blame. And those behaviors tend to 
shrink us, you know, tend to shrink us and focus us on achievements instead of how we feel, how strong we feel, how fun, how much fun we're having, etc. So the engagement and collaboration comes when we have a sense of freedom. We have a sense of autonomy and agency. We're not being told what to do in a command and control context. And we have the ability to speak without being scared of being criticized, judged, or blamed, or even fired. So this, it's amazing how one assumption that the human-centric leading model invites us to do can change everything. So we don't need to look at what specific behaviors we need to learn in this model. We, we think about what how to change our assumption, which then leads us to naturally take the behaviors that help us co-create, collaborate, be more creative, and be confident and, and safe at work. So this increasing your confidence, we live in environments where we could be fired at any minute. And so how do we stay confident in that kind of scary or threatening environment, even though it's not very explicit all the time, it's the underlying message. So it's also, you know, solving problems more effectively, meaning looking at what do people need? Not what do they say they need? What do they look like when they're upset and mad and even nasty? We can find ways to explore with each other what we need to get things done more quickly. Or if there's a problem, what is really needed versus what we would tend to do. And this is a very wonderful skill that's very, it's innate in all of us. You know, the human centric leading model is based on everything that's already innate. And it's just like a muscle. We're practicing and stretching specific muscles that have not been encouraged in our current socialization. So it's nothing really new. It's the way we look at it and the way we put things together that's new based on an assumption that we see each other as whole, pure and complete. And so when we solve people related problems more effectively, this is from math, more effectively, um, we basically look at, you know, what would help someone feel better or what, like what doesn't work, like criticizing, judging and blaming. And we would question, you know, why do people do that even if it doesn't work, etc. So in the end, it humanizes workplaces. So this is a big wish um, in the environment. You know, since the 60s, 70s, we've been becoming more and more aware of our inner purpose, our, our inner led purpose. And we care about doing meaningful things, not only things that increase efficiency and profits, which is really about what our economy is done, designed to do now. And now we're saying, well, what if companies start to be actually meaningful, like clean up toxic waste in a way that doesn't create more toxicity or um, have schools that actually teach people to feel confident and respectful and able to work with people of different generations, religious cultures, etc. So this is what's happening. This is this initiative, human centric leading, leading is really codifying what's already out there and what's already happening. And then saying, here's a simple way that, that we can do things that's, you know, kind of distilled a lot of research, a lot of documents, a lot of insight that's already out there in the world at large and puts it together in a simple way and say, if we could use that, things get more easy and things get more enjoyable. So the idea is to be, you know, find our purpose. And then as we're, you know, using our purpose or living our purpose, which may or may not be financially viable on a side note, you know, we can't assume that a purpose in life is always going to make money for us. It could be us for us to be kind or for us to learn how to do something very difficult within a family context. So let's not mix those, but that's another, another video. But as we get closer to what we think and what we feel our purpose is and how we can contribute to more humanized environment, human centric leading is a great way. It's a great mindset and a great toolkit to do so.